several years now. I met him first time. Some of us uh, know him well already. Me, Rongit, we have met him first time in a, a workshop for a preparatory workshop for science Olympiad, physics Olympiad, actually, International Physics Olympiad. So uh, Professor YK Bijay received his MSc degree in physics and electron PhD degree in physics from University of Rajasthan in the year 1975 and 1980, respectively. Uh, he spent uh, his postdoctoral stint in Uppsala University, Sweden. Uh, he has served as a professor in the Department of Physics, Rajasthan University, and later on as a director, Center of Development of Physics Education and Center for Non-Conventional Energy Resources at the University of Rajasthan, Jaipur. Uh, he is an accomplished researcher and an experienced teacher. He has published uh, more than 300 research paper and served as a, or he has graduated 40, 40 PhDs and numerous masters and undergraduate uh, thesis projects. Uh, his professional award include IUMRS Young Researcher Award, RK Ramanath Award, IAPT Teaching Award, etc. He was part of uh, development of various research facilities in the university. He has uh, 33 years of experience, uh, teaching experience, and he's passionate about teaching physics through demonstration model. And he has developed uh, later part, uh, he has developed many such experimental model, some of which you will see in his uh, talk today. He's a life member of IAPT, APS, IPA, RAPT, MRSI. He was also a president of IAPT uh, Rajasthan chapter. And he has taken, uh, he has initiated a mission to set up innovation hub as science gallery to learn and teach basic science principle with fun all over the country. He has set up over uh, 25 innovation hub so far. So over to Professor Bija. Thank you, Vipul. It's my pleasure to share some of the experience related with the science teaching with you all here. I'm really happy Vipul provided me the opportunity to interact with you. And uh, in fact, after retirement, I thought I should take uh, initiate you to the teaching community, whether my students are there as a faculty. So they should take a different approach. OK, and this is what I'm trying to show you. Uh, how to make the science interesting to the young ones so that they can remember. Uh, right now, I'm having my services at Center for Innovation in Science Teaching, CIST, which is part of IIS University, one of the private university in Jaipur. So there I'm regularly uh, assigned some, okay. Ah, okay, okay, okay. thank you. So I welcome you all to this small presentation on quantum science theme to bring it in the visible range. OK, uh, why I have chosen this? i like to share with you. Yeah. OK. That, that's it, that's it, hmm. that's it. Yeah. <clears throat> well, so I, I welcome you to this show. Why have chosen this theme, quantum science in visible range? Because we teach fundamental science through the interaction of atoms and molecules and their collective behavior, OK? but we never see the atom or the electron, but the effect of their interaction, we see them, okay, in our bulk measurements. So in order to show the dynamics or the behavior of atoms and molecules, 
we developed some model, okay, which has got the mass magnetic interaction equivalent, okay, and the dynamics represents the dynamics of the electron or atom and the interaction or the equilibrium. And that is what I like to share with you through the demonstrative videos and some of the models are here. So if you want to have a physical feel of that model, I bought it here, okay? And this is a collection of some of these toys, scientific toys, which we are sharing with different institutions so that the faculty and the students can enjoy with the close interaction, okay? Uh, well, I'm dedicating this to our Indian scientists, quantum scientists, three Indian quantum scientists, Raman, Meghna Shah, and SN Bose. And the contributions of there has taken the India to the lead, like the Raman effect interaction of photon with atoms and molecules, very fundamental. Again, the Shah, Meghna Shah, he worked on the origin of light. And of course, the Bose-Einstein statistics exchange energy interaction between the atoms and molecules, okay? And uh, we are having the centenary year celebration because of Professor D.P. Khandelwal. He initiated the Indian Association of Physics Teachers, IAPT, which has brought many physics teachers together. So we are celebrating his uh, centenary year this year, 21 to 22. We are having Internet Asian Physics Olympiad dedicated to Professor Khandelwal. In fact, I joined IAPT almost 1984 when the first few members uh, were invited to join IAPT. Professor D.P. Khandelwal was at Jaipur during 1977 to 78 as a visiting professor. So I had opportunity to interact with him and had many more memories, okay, and learnings and blessings out of his discussion okay which has led me to this career okay uh, the quality education and physics through experiment and the leadership taking leadership that has been the theme of professor khandelwal on which we are trying to follow the lines okay well what i have chosen is quantum science in visible range like atomic configuration if you want to see it okay how do you visualize how the atoms are arranged so i will use some model to show that. I will teach uh, how to represent the van der Waals force between the neutral atom, okay? Neutral atom should have no force. The mass is almost zero, negligible. But because of partial polarization, when they come close, they behave like a dipole. So there is an attractive as well as repulsive force. So how do you make an analog in the laboratory using the gravity and the magnetic interaction that I will illustrate? and demonstrate. I've got a model also for that. Lattice potential, I'll illustrate with two atoms. Lattice potential, one can generalize it for large number of atoms, okay? The potential energy diagram within the lattice. Uh, rather for scattering, again, I'll use some model with the magnetic interaction to show the scattering, one by R square uh, or one by R cube scattering, rather for scattering. Then the Bohr orbitals, we visualize electron dynamics in the form of uh, de Broglie's relationship. The electron have circular orbit or electrical orbit, and along with that, they have got a wavy motion. So the lambda associated with the energy, that is what we have some broad picture. To visualize that, I will show you some model, okay, mechanical model, and the normal states. Uh, of a circular loop of vibration, okay, are the stationary orbits concept. That is, I will illustrate. Uh, I will also show you mechanical model for Raman's effect or Raman's scattering, how the photon interacts with the atom, depending upon the phase, there could be a stock or empty stock. So a uh, mechanical model to demonstrate the phenomena of Raman. Alpha decay, I got a model through which we can say that this is a bound state and now the alpha particle comes out, okay? So this model represents the uh, nuclear potential, basically, okay? 
then molecular vibration i will be talking about the water molecule and methane molecule what are the vibration states of these molecules okay normally you have sophisticated instrument like nmr to find out that but with mechanical model in the low frequency domain you can visualize the modes of vibration of these molecules then of course we talk about the plasma state which is the fourth state of matter we can simulate in the laboratory in the vacuum chamber with the high voltage ionization that i will illustrate okay so well most of the apparatus which is used it's indigenous totally designed and developed locally partly i learned from university of rajasthan during my training and later on after retirement i contacted a small industry person who has given shape to all the ideas which i am having and that is what i will be presenting okay let me show you the atomic configurations the very simple illustrative model you are having hexagon close pack of these balls they are floating on a surface of water okay and each one has got a magnet ring magnet all right ring magnet is top to bottom it's like a dipole so there is a dipole dipole interaction all over when i have a video just look at it The common equilibrium. Okay, so this is a spherical approximation. These are like standard ping pong balls. Uh, yeah, ping pong ball or plastic balls, which are having air, so they can float on surface of water, and ring magnet is just glued, and it can float completely. Okay, you can have large number to make an assembly. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And, uh well right now we had taken the spherical but if you take a rectangle sorry circular if you take a rectangle then you get a very nice cubic pattern mm. yes yeah uh in fact when we look at atomic ordering then we talk of only few atoms like in nanotechnology okay how they organize they redistribute themselves okay the crystallization only few atoms make a single crystal seed and then they grow so, so this is actually more a lattice kind of thing. lattice yeah mm -hmm. the the atomic arrangement within the lattice okay how do they configure from molten state okay if you quench how the do this settle down okay this is what i like to represent uh, this is on the large number of atoms okay now it comes more or less to solid okay but this model has got steel balls all these are 1 mm steel balls they are 10000 number okay so you can get a feel of through this video you want to examine i got a physical form Bell plates. 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 Bell pl
time boundary, the vacancy and dislocation are visible throughout the structure. So, the solid it shows a plane, a monotonic plane. Okay. If, if this is a monoatomic right now, but if you want to have a mixture, then you can talk about the diatomic and the glasses. Okay. When one to show a wonderful potential, this is repulsive from the center and attractive from the side. Okay. So in order to depict that, I got this sort of arrangement. I bought it here, uh, physical form also, but you can view through the video. Due to gravity, it should come at the center, but from the center, there is a repulsion okay, because of this magnet. All right. I got a physical form, so those who are interested have a close look. They can. Uh, this is a point suspension. Yeah, it's here. This is the road. Okay. There is a steel ball, and a magnet is there. Okay. So you just attach it. All direction, all degree of freedom. Uh, yes, if you do a quantitative measurement, uh, yes, you take a video, okay, and trace it out, the amplitude and the position, all right, the velocity rather. Yeah, one can compute using tracker. Well, this is what is taught basically in theory textbooks. So we are looking forward to such potential value, okay? And this periodic potential value and so on, diatomic through such a model, okay? Well, this is repeated again, all right? So there are two magnets and you are having this point suspension. So it's a free to move, all right? So, it's a re repetition. We have an oscillating magnet between two permanent magnets. So initially it can move anywhere. Uh, and you can trace out the video. Mm -hmm. 
different particles, classical particles, which is a definitive part. And yeah. which you can see, it is a tracing problem. Yeah. You can see that it is a stolen part. Hmm. Electrons in a crystal don't follow this. This is not in the same sense of quantum as you are telling me. It's a classical particle in the same potential. In the same potential. Yeah. So the behavior, okay, it could be a random walk. Right, that because a large number of electrons are there, but when you see the individual, where it is going? Uh, well, yes. So what I'm trying to say is the behavior and the dynamics in certain potential value, okay, is matching, okay, and that is what we like to represent, right? Okay. Same. Matches, yeah. Potential profile matches. Uh. Uh -huh. Many sides. Uh. Continuum definition. Yeah, the concept, the wave and the particle concept. Uh, it's not classical, it's not quantum in the sense the main phenomenon is stability. Hmm. The visualization only in terms of the potential forms, okay, which is a measure in terms of the video. Huh? Uh, well, when you take a video and track it out using tracker, okay, then you can work it out how the kinetic energy is changing as a function of position. OK, that I mean, right now it is only the visual picture which goes in your mind that how the amplitude is coming out, how the frequency is changing. OK, that one has to compute and show it graphically. Right. For many of these models, we have worked out and the potential shape matches with the theoretically available data. Right. This is what is my submission. Well, you can have the configuration like we say the atom do not touch each other, but still they interact at a distance. So in order to show that, we have the ring magnets. If we mount them in this way, OK, it becomes a periodic array, OK? And we can show the interaction. It's like Newton's cradle, where you have the steel balls, OK? But here is a magnetic Newton's cradle, OK? You can see the energy transfer from one to other. And take a picture, video, and do the analysis, how it is going on, OK? If you have two, then you can play with these separation and study the energy transfer time okay so there are two modes when they are oscillating in phase or out of phase so that the difference splitting in the frequency is a function of coupling so those concepts one can introduce okay yeah exactly that's the neutron cradle magnetic version of a neutron yes exactly yeah one hmm. one and here the energy is splitting one can depict very well between with the two modes the same phase and out of phase mode okay well when i talk about the unharmonic oscillator okay so 
bar pendulum has got the linear restoring force for a small amplitude approximation, okay? But when you take it to the large amplitude, then some unharmonicity comes in. In order to enhance that unharmonic character, what we have is a magnet at the bottom, okay? So there is a restoring force due to gravity, which brings it back. And there is an additional restoring force, which is coming due to these magnets, okay? And these two magnets can be attractive or repulsive so that the restoring force, the nonlinear part could be attractive or repulsive. That can be seen when you see the video of this experiment, you see the So there is a potential barrier, okay, coming at the center because of the magnet, because the kinetic energy is not enough. It's un unable to cross. Let me replay. Sorry. Uh, because right now it is swinging very well, but it slows down at the center. Yeah. Okay. Which is an unharmonic oscillator. So the ratio force. Well, in this situation, the time period also becomes a function of amplitude. That's another character, which is a very special character of unharmonic oscillator that comes in. Okay. Then we can talk about the linear and nonlinear restoring force and so on. Well, this is a magnetic oscillator almost. The separation. Uh -huh. uh, well, the detail expression, uh, the magnetic interaction we say 1 by r square dependent, m1, m2 by r square. So this is how we have represented. But uh, detail analysis of this theory, A by X or whatever. Uh, yeah, this is derived, okay? So that I have not represented. What I've shown here, it's a attractive or repulsive, plus or minus, okay? That we can arrange by changing the polarity here between these two magnets. Because gravity is always at the center. If you have identical pole, so repulsion will come. Otherwise, attraction will come. And we have mapped the potential energy diagram of the both, deviation from the parabola, inverted or down. Well, in this magnetic oscillator, sometimes we feel that it will not oscillate, but it oscillates very well for a very long time. It's an There is a magnet. This one, when you suspend this bar pendulum and bring it close to the center, 
So this is an attractive mode. And when you displace this slightly, it's vibrating. Strong magnetic attraction. Okay. But as you go away, there is a repulsion because of the other ring magnet. So it's like alpha particle inside the nucleus. Okay and it comes out of the nucleus, it escapes. So there is a Coulomb barrier, right? So such simulation can be bought in these toys and we can show some analogy with the conventional atomic structures. Well, the resonance concept can be taught in a magnetic resonance like this. For example, you have got a coil here and coil you connect to the signal generator. So you can vary the frequency. And here is a syringe over which the mag ring magnet can be mounted. This is a sort of arrangement. You have a ring magnet, okay, which can be mounted here. And if you have one more ring magnet, it attracts, you reverse it, it repels. So the weight is balanced by the repulsive magnetic repulsion, okay? Now the frequency will be function of the mass. So if you want to vary mass, what you do is add one more, okay? And magnetic interaction remains the same, but you go in another domain. All right, the magnetic force changes because it's a non-linear, okay? So in order to do that resonance, you have a very simple setup. So this is the resonance frequency you can find out. It's about 5.5 hertz, okay? When you have the two magnets, the frequency goes to around seven hertz. Okay, the frequency increases. So the yeah, the maximum amplitude, yes. You are applying a signal from the signal generator. Uh, lower magnet is fixed. Uh, you see, just have a look. You see, this magnet is fixed. So this magnet is oscillating because of the oscillating magnetic field. You are having a coil here and you are having a signal. Solenoid, yeah, yeah, there's a solenoid, okay, to force this. Otherwise, it will be in equilibrium. Lower one is fixed. Lower one is fixed. The upper one you would like to oscillate and you want to find out the frequency. Then you have an energizer, okay, which is a solenoid, all right? And that solenoid uh, does that, okay? You can have the configuration one more. Uh, there are two, all right? So it's a molecule sort of arrangement. Two atoms are coupled. Now you want to study the vibration modes, okay? Then this is one of the mode, mode of vibration when the edges one of the free edge is oscillating, okay, not this one. At one particular frequency, at another frequency, the edges will be stationary and the middle one is moving, okay, all right? So when you talk about the wave packet, okay, then you can illustrate such phenomena. No, no, no. You see the vibration frequency of this and vibration frequency of the other end. These will be different, although the mass is same. Okay. So you can tune the frequency so that this one vibrates or this one vibrates. Okay. That's how you excite different modes of vibration. Okay. Normal modes. Uh, you can make a series of couple of magnets. No, 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 they are fixed. You see the mean position. 
is vibrating yeah mean position okay so you have this assembly here with several magnets okay and if you make it horizontal it's like periodic lattice okay compressible but because of that there is a gradient of spacing because this one is loaded with three rings okay the magnetic repulsion is balanced by the three times the weight this one last one has got all weight lying on the first one so the magnetic repulsion is balanced by the four times yes another resonance yeah okay middle uh, yeah there are different modes yes both are going up and down it's not uh, the wriggling okay yeah it's a solid correct uh, dedicated to raman so uh, what i have got in this model this represents a spring mass oscillator which has got a small magnet at the top okay so in earlier model of uh, an harmonic oscillator i had a fixed magnet and this magnet was oscillating okay this bar pendulum has got a magnet okay now in order to show the dynamics of this what i assume is that this is analogous to the photon this one is analogous to the photon and this is interacting with the atom analogous to an atom so uh, in electron uh, an atom there is some interaction and that interaction changes the frequency of this or the amplitude not the frequency but the amplitude okay in raman's theory it is only the frequency changes but here what we talk about the amplitude okay it's a analogous classical system so when you see the dynamics you see when this one is interacting this is an ind independent oscillator so sometimes it interacts in phase sometimes out of phase okay so when you study the energy content of this bar pendulum sometimes you get addition sometimes subtraction so the strokes and anti strokes line analogous information you get in this mechanical system yeah from from this vibrator energy goes back to the wing oh, oscillator yeah energy exchange energy exchange in phase or out of phase because this is independent you do, you never know in which phase the incoming will interact so when you do the energy analysis of this uh, bar pendulum then you find these kinks okay the enhancement and the stoke or anti stoke analogous well in order to show the bohr orbital uh well random random okay because you take a video of 2 3 minutes you can analyze 2 3 cycles and sometimes you get enhancement sometimes you get a uh, reduction uh in order to visualize the bohr orbital concept okay Yes. Yes. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But in this one, there is a large frequency difference. Okay. You see. Uh, very different. Okay. All right. and this magnet is oscillating which transfers the energy okay whether it is in phase or out of phase okay yeah so that is what it is analogous to stoke or anti stoke in bohr orbital you have got a signal generator and a speaker okay 
and this is a strip, a very thin strip of steel measuring tape. You fold it, okay. So this is a loop basically, all right. So by adjusting the frequency, one can set up stationary waves in this loop, okay, by adjusting the frequency. And I show you how it looks like. Can you see node and anti-node in this one? Uh, let me bring it back. When this is speaker vibrates, okay? So the vibrations are here showing anti-node, node, anti-node, node. node. Okay, so you can find out number of loops lambdas. Okay, analogous to this picture, which is there in the book, and the condition two pi r equal to n lambda satisfies that is called the stationary views. Okay, and one can change with the signal generator. Okay, very good visualization and data can be recorded very well by changing the frequency. Yeah jump yeah exactly uh, at random frequencies it's always stationary <laughs> there's no vibrations okay yeah condition is satisfied correct okay like this is a mechanical analog same so this uh, has appeared in american general physics when we submitted at really low frequency you have got an oscillator and by string you are providing energy to this loop okay when you show, when you see the video, you see, this is how you are doing the energy transfer, okay? And this loop, when the energy goes clockwise and anticlockwise, you see the flower like picture, which comes out in the visible range, depicting the lambda. And you can vary the frequency of this strip oscillator. So this is, again, a mechanical analog. Yes, but they are coupled. Individual objects are moving, but they are coupled. Okay. All right. So they manifest the effect of lambda. So when you have large portion. That's an anti node. That's an anti node. <laughs> yeah, that's a resonance. Okay. Well, uh, we have developed a frictionless track using aluminum as well as plastic acrylic okay where we have uh, almost zero friction huh. uh, sorry in this one yes they are all identical okay uh, by adjusting these masses, they are all identical, okay? And they are hanging through uh, about uh, one meter thread. So this is a floating loop. And this floating loop is connected with a thread. So you are dragging it periodically. The frequency could be about 0.2 hertz, 0.3 hertz, okay? And you see them suddenly that. Yes, yeah. So you see. So you can correlate the phase. You can correlate the phase between these, you know. So right? that is what, so what yeah, so basically there is no short range or long range interaction between those objects. Yeah, correct. That is not there. Yeah, that is not there. It's only the mechanical behavior. So on this air track, what you have uh, is a glider which can move conveniently, okay? So let me have this video. All right. So magnet is mounted on that glider. And because of these two magnets, there, there is a potential well. And that potential well is oscillating, okay? So again, 
there could be a interaction okay it depends upon the period of oscillation and the travel time of this magnet so when you see for a while again it's all classical okay but you will observe that this can be trapped in this oscillating potential okay is accelerated okay again escaped so right now it is trapped okay so and the energy at all huh? you are not varying right we are not varying we are not varying dynamic dynamic okay represents the trapping and retrapping okay it may happen again not right now okay but the next time escaped okay it will go up to the end and come back and this fellow is oscillating escaped again trapped escaped okay uh, initially these are the magnets permanent magnet so you bring and leave it there is a magnet so it's just oscillating okay velocity yeah trapped and so on. yeah exactly so all these are kinematic factors okay they decide the trapping and anti trapping well in order to illustrate the molecular dynamics a representative water molecule okay made out of the ball and a spring all right the size represents the oxygen and hydrogen relative and this is a methane so when you see the dynamics of this again you mount it on a speaker so when you have the frequency adjustment of the speaker then you see at certain frequency this is the mode of vibration we call it as a torsional mode of vibration water molecule okay this happens the same molecule at a particular frequency but when you change the frequency then the stretching mode of vibration is excited okay this happens at higher frequency like transverse yeah like yeah like this this is a stretching mode and this is a torsional mode so both mode can be excited in the same molecule at different frequency okay uh, in this methane molecule also so this is a torsional mode there are four bonds around 109 degree each again spring and mass system is there which is mounted on a speaker okay and when you have the other frequency and you have the stretching mode okay the ball goes again forward and reverse okay that's the highest frequency correct yeah uh in order to show the rutherford scattering again you are having a long pendulum about 1 meter long and a ring magnet at the bottom okay and uh, you can play with the parameters the release energy we can control with the solenoid okay and the angle of scattering can be measured and that is reproducible okay at a certain energy at a certain angle and in order to change the impact parameter you vary this central ring magnet from the central position okay 
the overall length of this uh, pendulum is about 1.2 meter, okay? Because you need a stand and other things at the bottom. Well, in order to illustrate the plasma state, we have got a small vacuum chamber made out of acrylic with the rotary pump and the two electrodes fitted with these spark plugs so that the insulation is maintained and uh, uh, high voltage is applied across these two electrodes. So which is positive, which is negative, this is up to you to handle, okay? And you can see the behavior as you start the rotary pump. It's only the air nitrogen measure, okay? And when you apply uh, biasing, then after 10 to minus 2, you get a discharge, okay? And that discharge, you see, it localizes at the central point, okay? Which is positive right now, which can collect most of the electrons, which are having light mass but the ion cannot drift out. So the ions which are localized in this region, they are having intense plasma density, okay? The ions, okay? The electrons are rapidly collected because of the low mass. So if you change the polarity of positive negative, then the illumination comes on the outer sign and less illumination at the center. because plasma is a collection of positive ion, electron, and photons, okay? They are at thermal equilibrium, and quasi-state neutrality is there, okay? It means there is a recombination as well as excitation. So the high voltage is exciting them, okay, ionizing them, but the thermal collision is responsible for recombination. So when there is a recombination, light is emitted. And therefore, most of the plasma, they give some illuminations, right? So when you change the polarity, the major illuminescence comes from the ring. There is no illuminescence from the central wire, okay? The electrons are collected rap rapidly, all right? The ions are left behind, okay, in this region. So such demonstrations help students to understand the phenomena related with the gas discharge, which are there in most of the uh, UG and school students in particularly, okay, NCRT syllabi. Uh, well, the theme is play, enjoy, and learn. In most of these demonstrations, I use toys and visible uh, parameters, okay, so that they are perspective to human mind, okay? The perception is very important. Something should be visible, okay? For example, I have, this is a very common toy. Normally, we use on automobile. It dances and so on. So what we have done is we have made ear using this ping pong ball, okay? And this is how it responds. Very happy at a certain frequency, okay? And that is what you should smile, okay? Enjoy. All right, it can say yes or no also, moods. Okay, how it says yes, let's see. It has to finish, then I go to the next. Yes, this is what he says. Yes, you understood what I said? Yes, few will say no. Okay, how they say no? This is how they say no. So by controlling the frequency, all right, 
you can excite the moods, you know, for fun. Okay. And of course, when you clap, you enjoy. Okay. And that is what is the fun to learn science. Thank you. Thank you. Well, so this is uh, my journey. And I wish that you also enjoy this journey with me. Have an innovation hub. Give a place, you know, in your institution. Most of these toys you can have here. Okay. The theme is science gallery you should set up where you enjoy teaching and learning process. So this is what we have done recently at Pilibit UP. There is a common notion that physics is incomprehensible to the people of average ability. If you think so, please visit the Bentex Innovation Hub, where you can readily and eagerly learn the laws of physics with the help of ingenious models designed by the most dynamic, passionate and outstanding personality, Professor Y. K. Vijay, Director, Center for Innovation in Science Teaching, the IIS University, Jet. This innovation hub was inaugurated today by Honorable Mrs. Sanjeev Kaur Sindhima, Founder Principal, Benin Public School, PED. Here you can easily understand the concept of electromagnetic induction, eddy current, laser diffraction, Doppler effect, rotational dynamics, plasma state, Bohr's orbit, wave formation, and many more. So please take out the time from your busy schedule to explore our newly inaugurated innovation hub, the only work in this daily area. Thank you. Uh, well, I can talk about another one at Rudrapur. OK. They are also very excited. This was Science January. Common sense at its best. It is a common notion that the concepts of physics are difficult to understand theoretically. Everything is theoretically. This is a shock wave. Until it is done. If you feel the same, Vortex. please come and visit the exciting innovation hub of Delhi Public School Rudrapur, where you can understand the typical concepts of physics by roller coaster dynamics. Which I should. Professor Y K Vijay, President, Indian Association of Physics Teachers, Rajasthan. This innovation hub was formally inaugurated by Dr. C. Tiwari, Director, B. Chandra Singh, Verwali Uttarakhand University, in presence of Professor Y K Vijay, Chairman of the PS Rudrapur, Shri Sajid Singh Rover, Principal, Staff, and Students. Here, you can easily understand the concepts of electromagnetic reduction, air cannon, Doppler effect, diffraction, eddy currents, electricity, and many more. Why don't you take some time off from your busy schedule and visit the Innovation Hub at DPS Rudrapur to discover a lot more about the world of science. You like to see the bouncing light here? Have you heard the word bouncing light? Normally, the light travels in a straight line. OK? But it can move in a curved way also. All right? When there is a gradient of refractive index. All right? So that we can do it here in a small toy. So I have got a water tray here. Yeah, if uh, we can bring it. It will be easy. Because some of the demonstration I already done. Only one or two I will do it here. Yeah. Is it visible in the camera? In this direction I should have? Uh, you should stop presenting perhaps. Otherwise, uh...
we are seeing the presentation. Can stop presentation? Yeah, you can, please. Is it fine, ADG? Yeah, it's perfect now. Can you see the tray? Yeah, yeah. We can, can you see, see the water, water tray? Water right. tray. So I have got two things here. One is a sugar solution. This I made today in the guest house and i got a water tray here okay so when i have a laser beam i should do it from here it can go through straight right can you see the straight path this one to do it like this way okay so people can see you can see this uh, trajectory is a straight Let me put a reflector here. Okay. So this is a straight path. Even in air, it is a straight path. And even in water, it is a straight path. Okay. Now what I do is, thoda uh, sa light chahiye. Mass of Jaga, yes, sugar solution. I am both sorry, cheating. I think okay. So that sugar solution I am pouring from the whole chili. Is it visible now? Yeah, okay. I am putting the sugar solution. Can you see the dynamics? What I have, what is happening? The sugar solution goes and settles down because concentrated, correct. Okay. And the molecule of the sugar are heavy. Can you see now what is happening to the light beam? Is it tilting down? Can you see the tilting effect? Somebody wants to come at the front and see close. Huh? If I make more dense, it bounced. Okay. And came. Can you see the bouncing? Sir, you want to come at the front uh, close and witness that? Can camera do that? Bouncing? Vipul, can you take a picture of this? I'm seeing first time three bounces. Okay, a it's a Calcutta sugar. Camera is too saturated. Camera is, not is it? Uh, camera is not. Camera is saturated. But I, I'm fascinated I with the three bounces. Okay. Can you see the bounce? Yeah, yeah. Huh? Yeah, so busy, but. Yes, students, those who are keen, they can come up. I'm almost done. Can you see the bouncing like a cricket ball? Huh? So even I am fascinated to see this experiment. When I repeat, sometimes it comes out very well. Okay. Hmm? It's bouncing. Hmm? When I take it up, it's not bouncing. It's going straight. So when there is a gradient of refractive index, then there is a bouncing. Okay. All right. So it's just a laser beam. Okay. Ah, you want to see? Okay, come. It's a rare ex experience, okay? When I keep it up, 
then it is a straight all right because density is almost same throughout okay but when i go down it follows that track bounces okay we call it as a bouncing light okay one more last can you have light uh the prism dynamics you have seen the ray diagram of a prism have you seen or not if you have not seen come here and see have a look what i do i got a bottle of water pani ka tha na peene ka ah it's here so i got a empty prism here made out of acrylic sheet transparent i can keep it here okay and when i have a screen then the laser beam goes and passes through straight path okay all right but as i put water into the prism the light path is not straight it goes on this side okay this is a straight path and it passes through the prism and even inside the prism it gets bent because of the change in the refractive index from rare to dense and dense to rare again okay well you can place it here and again see the effect okay of straight beam going bent okay when i move the prism on the other side okay then it bends on the side other side so it's always towards the base this is the base of the prism okay which i have covered all right with paper this is the side of the prism and this is also side okay only few students know this most of the students say this is the base of the prism which is wrong okay so we deliberately made this prism to teach base of the prism all right okay this is the called base of the prism and these are the sides of the prism and this is how when the beam goes this is a straight beam going but as it passes through the prism it goes this side okay if i do it this way then it goes on the other side all right this is going straight yeah tir also yes for tir i got this small tray okay so you can fill half with water and the do the tir okay so simple all right so this is the incoming beam so you have to vary the angle all right and see from where you get the reflected beam going there okay so transmitted as well as reflected from the interface okay you can do it from the other side also all right emerging light it bends and here you can vary the angle okay and press the outgoing light this you can keep it on piece of paper and a circular dial and do the measurement quantitative measurement you can play around with the solution different solution so such toys we design and develop and leave it to different institution to develop more okay so thank you with your attention if there are some queries okay not the questions but some queries i will be happy to answer okay whatever i showed you it's 
whatever I have understood the behavior of these mechanical systems, okay, and I tried to correlate with my understanding of quantum science, okay. I may be off from the theory or the real situation. It's all because of my education is not as a theoretical physicist or a quantum physicist. I'm a material scientist and the experimentalist. I have learned the science by doing things, okay. So whatever I showed you, these are all real facts, okay, real workable models, which you can use it and grow them, develop them further. Okay, this is what is my submission. Thank you. And thank you, Vipul, again, for giving me this opportunity. All right. Actually, we have shown, seen so many magnet and the magnetic strength matter for us, uh, I think, uh, seeing the phenomena. Uh, actually, what is the typical strength of the magnet you have used? Uh, all these magnets are niodium magnets, which we are using, have a surface magnetism around 300 kilogauss. 300 kilogauss? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sir. Okay. So, as a function of distance, it weakens out. But when I showed you, this configuration in the syringe, all right? You can verify this number 300 by the distance formula. It's a measurable, about 3 mm distance is coming because of this magnetic repulsion. And 35, 35, 35, 35, about 140 gram. Okay, you can do that numerically okay. and verify. Okay, so thank you. Okay. Hello, sir. I don't have any question. I have just a query. Yeah, please. You have shown some classical analogs of some quantum phenomena, right? Yes. <clears throat> sir, my question is: Is there possible to show uh, s s electron has two spin polarization state, or it has any classical analogs? Analog? Mm -hmm. We haven't tried it so far, but certainly when you talk about polarization okay you can generate a polarized beam and see the effect of interaction of these dipole okay so in one plane you get light in another plane you don't get a light okay there you see the effect of electron dynamics how the electron interacts with the photon okay Sir, if it is not electron, consider another elementary particle, let's say having spin one, uh -huh. then it has three spin polarization state. Uh -huh. Then how to show it? Mm, well, we haven't tried that. Okay, okay. sir. Thank you. The quantized state of angular momenta you are talking about. Yeah, yeah. Space quantization. Yeah, mm. correct. correct. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I think it, I was audible, right? So do you have any other question? So I think we had a really wonderful discussion and thank you very much again for this wonderful demonstration. Thank you. And uh, it was a yeah, pleasure. I request uh, Professor Oren Banerjee or DPS chair to uh, say a few words. And Maybe if you allow, can we have a group photo with all of you? Sure. Maybe okay. Uh, could you move back a bit? Both of you. Move back a bit. Because that, that yeah. Right. Now we can't see anybody. Yeah. So as I said, take the camera. Yeah. So he you can't see your faces. How what? DPS. You can't see your faces. We can. Oh, faces. You can only see at least on the on the it's recording. It's I think only only. Ah. Part. So behind the table would be good. Okay. On the other side of the table. Yeah. 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 Ye
Dah duduk duit. Dia punya duit tu baru saya duduk. Dah respect. Ya, that's perfect. It's fine? Right, right. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, so from now from you moved on from DPS Rudrapur to DPS Kolkata. 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 Aizar Kolkata. Aizar Kolkata. Lani and thanks a lot. Please come back Thank again. Thank you. Sure, Thank sure. It's a pleasure. Good. Thank you. And I invite all of you, whenever the opportunity comes, visit any innovation hub. They are spread all over the country. If you are coming to Jaipur, we have I've got one. If you go to Bhuneshwar, you can find one. If you go to uh, Chandigarh, uh, close to Chandigarh is Thanakala. You can have one. Okay. Even in South, you go to Bangalore, you will find one. Okay. So they are all spread throughout the country. And looking forward to one place at Calcutta, I said soon. Okay. There is one at Midnapur also. Those who are going to IIT Kharagpur, close to that Midnapur, they have got an innovation now. And most of these toys.